Good morning. It's Sunday the 1st of November 2020. It's a, a privilege and an honour that you'll join with us today for Cornerstone Online. It's a, a great thing that we can join wherever we are, right around the country or around the world, but we can be together as one in this place. And it, it's, it's a, a wonderful thing. We pray that God would bless you today. We pray that you would know his peace, his presence, his strength and his love in your life. As you watch and you take part in today's service online, we pray that you would know God again. You would know something more about God. You would know God in a deeper way, in a more special way. And if you've never never met God, if you don't know God as your saviour, then I pray this morning that you would hear what's said, that you would understand, that you would see that Jesus loves you and that Jesus died for you right now. Even though it happened all of those years ago, Jesus still loves us today. And I'm just going to read a, a psalm, Psalm 133, but it's from a, a different translation. How wonderful, how truly wonderful and delightful to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity. It's as precious as the sacred scented oil flowing from the head of the high priest Aaron dripping down upon his beard and running all the way down to the hem of his priestly robes. This heavenly harmony can be compared to the dew dripping down from the skies upon Mount Hermon, refreshing the mountain slopes of Israel. For, th for from this realm of sweet harmony, God will release his eternal blessing, the promise of life forever. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are with us. We thank you that when we gather together in unity, Lord, you are there. You command the blessing. And we ask you that this morning, through these things that we do and time of worship and round your word and breaking bread together, that you would be at the very heart, the very centre of everything we seek to do, that we would uplift and glorify your name. So God, take all the glory this morning as we worship you in this service. Help us to know your presence in our lives. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before. the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Your rich
is failing The end draws near And my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His holy Good morning. Two weeks ago when I shared with you, I shared from John chapter 5 and I want to go back to John 5 this morning. But today I want to read from a slightly different version of the Bible to that which I normally use. I want to speak to you from the voice, a more modern translation than that that we normally use. So I'm going to start to read in John chapter 5 at verse 31. These are the words of Jesus. If I stand as the lone witness to my true identity, then I can be dismissed as a liar. But if you listen, you will hear another testify about me. And I know what he says about me is genuine and true. You sent messengers to John, and he told the truth to everyone who would listen. Still, his message about me originated in heaven, not in mortal man. I'm telling you these things for one reason, so that you might be rescued. The voice of John the Baptist, the wandering prophet, is like a light in the darkness, and for a time you took great joy and pleasure in the light he offered. There's another witness standing in my corner who is greater than John or any other man. The mission that brings me here and the things I'm called to do demonstrate the authenticity of my calling which comes directly from the Father. In the act of sending me, the Father has endorsed me. None of you really knows the Father. You've never heard his voice or seen his profile and his word does not abide in you because you do not believe in the one sent by the Father. Here you are, scouring the scriptures, hoping that you will find eternal life among a pile of scrolls. What you don't seem to understand is that the scriptures point to me. Here I am with you, and still you reject the truth contained in the law and prophets by refusing to come to me so that you can have life. Shall we pray? Lord, the giver of eternal life. Help us always to look to you, Lord Jesus, and help us too to share the good news with others. Speak to us clearly this day through your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever noticed how God seems to have moved through generations in some particular families? The pastor in Sunderland at the City Life Church is Johnny Clark. Before him, his father, Kevin Clark, was pastor there. And before Kevin, his father-in-law, Johnny's grandfather, Tom Hilton, was pastor in that same church. Glenn Barrett, 
who is the national leader for Assemblies of God in the United Kingdom, is also a third-generation Pentecostal pastor. In our weekly Bible studies, we've recently been looking at Sarah and Rebecca, and in these we've seen how God selected Abraham and Sarah to become the forebears of his chosen people, the nation Israel. God knew they would give rise to a great nation even before one son had been born to them. And generation after generation of the same family went through many hard days in the outworking of God's great divine plan for Israel. In the reading from John 5, we see family connections at work here too. Of course, there is the most obvious connection to us in God the Father and God the Son. But even though it's plain for us to see that connection, it was far from obvious to the people that Jesus was speaking to. And we see that there's another family connection in there. Jesus speaking about John the Baptist. We know from the scripture that Jesus and John are related through their mothers, Mary and Elizabeth. For in Luke one thirty six, we read, The angel said to Mary, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. We're not told how Mary and Elizabeth were related, but if the mothers were family, then the sons were related too. What's important about John, it's not that he was related to Jesus, but that he obeyed the call of God the Father. John was purposed to be a voice calling out in the wilderness. Not a nameless voice calling out into some uninhabited void, but a purposeful prophetic voice telling the people of Israel to abandon their sinful ways and get right with God. Jesus did not speak about John because he was his cousin. Jesus spoke about John because he was the voice that provoked the conscience of many people speaking truth and speaking the word of God. In some very real and substantial ways, family and being related are important to God. Our model for marriage and command to reproduce these are both found in the early chapters of Genesis. And the people of Israel came to be a great nation because of the faith and obedience of generations of one family. In the New Testament, we see that Paul commends Timothy because his mother Eunice and grandmother Lois are both women of great faith. But being from a family that is full of faith, is less important than having faith and belief. In Ezekiel chapter 18, it's made very clear that each person must answer before God for their own behaviour, and that every individual in every generation is responsible for his or her own walk with God. In Luke chapter 8, verses 20 to 21, we see Jesus in conversation with some of his followers. They say, your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. But Jesus answered and said to them, my mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. When Jesus says that, He's not putting down Mary or his earthly brothers, but is emphasising, he's stressing the importance of faith and obedience in the kingdom of God. He's telling them that it's more important to believe and to have faith than anything else. Traditionally, to be a member 
of an earthly royal family, you have to be born into royalty. From John 5, 37 to 38, we see Jesus say to those who were born to be members of God's royal household, to the sons and daughters of Israel, none of you really knows the Father. You've never heard his voice or seen his profile. His word does not abide in you because you do not believe in the one sent by the Father. Some of God's chosen people, some of his elect nation, had gone their own way, abandoning their birthright and rejecting Jesus, who was and is the one sent by the Father. The good news for us is that when we accept Jesus as Lord and Saviour, we become members of God's great family, with all the privileges that that brings. In 1 Peter chapter 2, in verses 9 and 10 we read, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvellous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. For those that Jesus spoke to, their lack of faith separated them from God. For those who accept Jesus as Lord and Saviour, those who believe and have faith in him, we are bound to God, adopted into his family, and made to be his own special people. John the Baptist found favour not because he was born a Jew or because he was related by blood, but because he believed and proclaimed the one true and living God and Jesus as the Messiah. As adopted sons and daughters, let us be like John and share the good news that Jesus came into this world to bring. Amen. Let's pray. O oh Lord, we are gathered here together today, knowing you as Lord and Saviour, understanding that we are adopted into your family when we come and accept Jesus into our lives. Help us to behave in a way that is right and pleasing to you. And may the things that we do this week speak of the great love of God at work in this world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. Oh,
How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he is our heavenly Father and we are his children. Part of that family of God that we've just heard about today. Let's come and let's break bread together. And like we say, if you want to spend extra time and just pause the video now. Otherwise, we're going to break bread together and I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians 11 23 to 26 for I received from the Lord what I also passed unto you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes and there's the the verse that we previously showed in romans 6:23 the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That our life, we have our lives because Jesus gave his life for us. That he loved us enough to give his whole life as a sacrifice. That we couldn't match up to God's standard. But Jesus knew what he had to do. And he gave his life because he loves you and he loves me. Let's pray together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And please join us as we conclude our service today with singing our final song, In Christ Alone My Hope Is Found. Where else and who else can we put our hope and our trust? Because our hope is, is in God alone. So let's worship together in Christ alone.
In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on Him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I lay. Pastor Sandy for sharing God's word with us and there were a couple of things that, that spoke to me but it just kept reminding me that we are part of God's family we are part of something greater than what I feel and I think I am myself but I am part of God's family locally with our church Cornerstone but also nationally with all of the churches and all of the people and the worldwide church because God doesn't call us by ourselves to be the church, but we are the church together. We can't be a church by ourselves. If I went and sat in a building, I wouldn't be, I'd be part of the church, but I wouldn't be. But when we join together, we are the church right around the world. And I, I thought about the verse that Pastor Sandy read, one of them. It says, but you are a chosen people. God's chosen you. God's chosen me for this time, for this season, for this purpose, at this very moment, God's chosen you. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. I don't know if you think you are or you, but actually God thinks that you're wonderful. God thinks that you're amazing. 
God thinks that you're the best thing that he's created. And God loves you right where you are. So I'll read those, verse, those words again. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And we pray that this week that you would know God's light shining in your life, in your heart, in your life. We pray that God would speak to you. We pray that God would bless you as you go about your business, as you do what you have to do, go to work or to the shops or wherever you are, that you would remember you are a chosen people. You are part of that church family that God says is mine. It belongs to him. We are his and God's special possession. You are special to God. So when we're feeling down, when we're feeling like there's no hope, remember that God loves you and God has a plan for your life. And I pray that God this week would reveal himself to you, that he would speak to you, he would share what he has for you, that you would ask him and that we would be called out of the darkness into that wonderful, marvellous light. Let's see the light of Jesus. Let's be the light of Jesus this week as we go around these places that we have to go to. Let's be the light. Let's shine our lights for him. Remembering that we are part of God's family. So I pray that God would bless you. Take care, stay safe and God bless you all. Amen. <laughs>